What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to another video. And today's video is on Project TT, but this might be one of the last times this car features on my channel. And if you don't know what Project TT is, this is a Mark II Audi TT that I bought from a scrapyard. That's right, I got this car from a scrapyard and I've been restoring it, resurrecting it, saving it from that scrapyard pile. And in the last video that if you've not seen, please go and check it out. There is a link in the descriptions below to the playlist of everything we've done to this car. I actually got it back on the road. It passed its MOT without a single advisory, not one. And since then, I have been using the car on occasions and I've used it as like a bit of a daily driver to get it on the commute to see if there's any other niggles with the car. And I can report that there is well, there's a few, two of which I fixed off camera, but one we're going to be doing today. And this one is, we are changing the thermostat. Now, the temperature gauge, this car does not get up to operating temperature. It sits around the quarter mark while you're driving. When you stand still in traffic, it goes to the 90 and sits there perfectly. And then as you start moving and air starts passing through the, into the engine, into the radiator, it then drops down to so around the quarter. And the research I've done suggests that the thermostat is stuck open. So, today we are going to be changing the thermostat on this car. Now my TT has the 2 litre TFSI engine and from the research I've done, the thermostat is located just here, like kind of down by the side of the dipstick and it is behind the alternator. So we're clearly going to have to get the alternator off the engine cover is going to have to come off so yeah i suggest what we do is i'm going to finish my coffee i've started drinking and then we're going to crack on so the reason that we're at the boot of the car first is because if i'm taking the alternator off the car i need to make sure i don't get electrocuted basically so i'm going to disconnect the battery the battery on these tt's is located in the boot under the cap there it is so nice and easy then Dead simple, all I'm going to do, take the negative off and just tuck it down the back of the battery and that's it. So that's all I've done, negative terminal off, tucked it down there so it can't reconnect and then I'm just going to use this microfiber so that when I shut the boot it doesn't let me out. And we don't have the escapade that I had when I first picked this car up or it got dropped off at my house. Make sure you check out the reveal video if you don't know what I'm on about. <laughs> just done then off camera is um, I've took the under trail off the car I didn't film it because well it's only taking an under trail off innit so I didn't film that bit the next we're gonna drain the coolant system right so the light's not the best but here we go so I'm on the driver's side of the car I think this is a boost pipe and I think this is our radiator so I'm gonna disconnect this boost pipe first and tuck it out of the way and then I'll disconnect this the radiator hose and that's how I'm gonna drain the coolant I think is the way we're going to do it. Right, so getting that um, pipe off of the radiator to drain the coolant was a bit of a pain in the ass, but we've got it done. Took the coolant cap off. I think all the coolant's now out of the system. Um, and then for anybody asking or wondering, coolant doesn't taste very nice. So the next thing we need to do then is get this alternator off. So yeah, I'm gonna make something to eat. I've not had anything to eat, it's like 11 o'clock. I'm cracking on with this, but whew, I'm losing patience because I'm so hungry, so. I'm gonna make some toast, I think, and then and then we'll crack on. Yeah. <sighs> 
spot liner is out. Wow, wow. If you're tackling this yourself and you think it'll take you an hour, let me tell you, you're wrong. I've got the thermostat off the car. I, I've done time lapses to try and figure that out. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I've got the old thermostat here. Let me explain to you how I've done it. So this is the old thermostat. This is the part that connects to the engine block. Yeah, so it sits on the engine block like so. The 10 mil bolt at the top, the 10 mil bolt at the bottom. Then. You've got a push clip hose at the bottom, you've got a hose here that's held in by a Torx bit and you've got um, a rubber hose here that goes into a metal one. Now that rubber hose here, I fully removed it, I fully removed it from the car. So that connects onto there like so and that runs across the end of the engine. There's a fat, an M5 spline bolt connected there and it connects to a T-junction on this side. I took that hose off first took it off from the other side and I slid that fully out of the car to give me some more space to work. I then undone this bolt here and then popped this one out. It's a metal bracket with a, an O-ring. That then got in the way effectively. There's another M5 spline that I've undone but effectively that got in the way. Pulled the clip off that one and I basically had to move this the metal bracket here, the metal holes here, to the, try and pull it to the side so I could get it up and out and then that one just pops off once you've got the clip off i'll explain it more in a minute when we have a look at the car but it's took me that long to get this off i'm having a minute right let's have a go at getting this new one the new one is here let's get it on the car up there with a very very difficult job um, I proper pressed on don't know how much I've actually filmed probably not a lot this should probably be a really short video if I upload it but let me show you so here we go then everything is back on tensioner alternator I've connected all the pipes up I'm now gonna rest the uh, engine cover on the car reconnect the battery put some coolant in and fire it up so whew. This has been a day, this, a tricky job this, not for the faint hearted. I'm going to fill this up, obviously when I fire it up I'll have to bleed this system. Coolant going in. I've left the under tray off as well so I can listen for leaks. I'm just going to back up, bubbling away there and the engine's not even running. You can see it is bubbling. Right, I'm going to go for a start up. You can see it's already sucked a load of it through. So let's top it up, let the car get up to temperature. So as you can probably hear then, the car is running behind me. It's sucking the coolant through nicely. I'm gonna allow, obviously, the car to get up to temperature for it to bleed the system. Then I'll turn the heaters on in the car to bleed the, the heater matrix as well. But for now, I think we've got about, probably about a 20 to 30 minute wait while the car gets up to temperature. While that's doing that, I'm gonna go and wash my hands because that was a filthy job and I'm gonna go and have a bit of a tidy up. So I'll catch back with you when the car's up to temperature. So the car's up to operating temperature, as you can see, the heaters are blowing warm in the car, which is a good sign. Cooling level sitting steady. I put the cap back on. So the system should now pressurise and we'll see if it overheats. I'm going to leave it running for a little bit longer. So here we go then. I've had the car running although it is switched off now. 
I've had it running for approximately um, probably the best part of a half an hour, if not a little bit longer, at temperature, coolant cap on, and the temperature isn't going above 90. Fans kick in and the temperature does not go above the 90 mark, which is a positive. The heat inside, the heater is also nice and warm. Again, another positive. So the only true test is to take the car on a, a roll, a test drive, to see if it stays at temperature while it's moving. Um, I'm not going to do that today, it's very late in the day, this job has took me all day. I'm going to do a little bit of an outro tomorrow while I, um, I run an errand and stick some fuel in it. And as I said, if this is successful, this road trip tomorrow is successful, the car will be going up for sale in the next few days. It's been a journey with Project TT, but we'll save that for another video. Thanks very, um, I'll see, I'll catch you in the morning. I'm going to say thanks for watching, but I'll catch you in the morning. Uh, and we'll go through uh, if the car is okay and if it's running all right. Cut to the next day. It is the next day. So I'm just out in the TT, as you can see. Um, I'm at, happy to report. So what I did last night is I actually left it running while I tidy everything away. The car was stood still on the drive, cap on the coolant for roughly around, I bet it was the best part of an hour, and it all seemed well. I come out in the car this morning, check the coolant. It, did need to top it up, so I've topped it up. I've come out in the car this morning, touch wood, with no signs of, of it going past the 90. And what I'm happy to report as well is, while I'm driving now, the gauge is sat perfectly at 90 degrees, whereas previously, and the reason we've done the thermostat is because it would sit at like a like a quarter, would that be 70, maybe around the 70 degrees mark. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to report, I seem to have fixed a problem. It's a bit of a dual carriageway now because that's where like on the motorway and the dual carriageways like really where the temperature would fall on the car so we're gonna hit the dual carriageway just put the windows up sorry the audio quality was bad then because the windows are down but we're hit the dual carriageway now stretch its legs a little bit um, and, and see the temperature stays at the 90 degrees where we want to drive us eh? Sunday drivers we're in a 50 this is a 50 duke mile hour dual carriageway and the chap in front of me is doing 37 I really like come quite attached to this TT. If I'm honest, I've been through a bit of an emotional roller coaster with it, but seems to be through the thick of it now. I am. I do feel a bit sad that I'm going to be putting the car up for sale, but obviously I can't. I can't keep them all, can I? Not at such an early stage in trying to make this work. So this is sadly this will be going up for sale. But yeah. If, I hope you, one of you guys, you know, if you're interested in watching this video, my link to the description, uh, my contact details in the description below. Yeah. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to go and get where I'm going to go, um, get some cat food, because the cat's got to eat as well. And yeah, I'll find somewhere nice to end the video. So if you've enjoyed to this video, thanks very much for watching. Make sure you check out the rest of, the rest of Project TT videos if you haven't already. I've took this car out from a scrapyard and got it back on the road with a full clean bill of health with an MOT with no advisories. I'm really, really happy with myself, really proud. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one. Thanks very much.